Good morning, everybody. This is Judy from Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia. I hope that you're doing well. Boy, it's almost the end of August. I have no idea where the time goes. In Fairfax County, which uh, is where I live, all the kids are back in school already. And, um, you know, college kids go back. Some are there already. Some go back in a month. It, this is a crazy time of year, but we hope that you've enjoyed the summer and I know for us summer can last into October with the warmth here so um, we hope that you enjoy it myself I prefer to stay inside with the air conditioning and so so this is my my time I try to go home and do some sewing um, we have lots of things going on here at artistic artifacts for we've tried to keep social media up to date and show you for those of you who are far and then we've had lots of people come into the store and see what's going on we have added Bernina long arms so we have two long arms that are set up in our store and you're like where on earth did you fit them in it was a little tricky <laughs> There is a, we're a little mushed more. Um, we, we're trying to um, reduce something. I don't know. Every little bit helps. We got rid of one rack, which was a, really a big deal. So we've moved some stuff around. You might have to ask as to where did you put this, Judy? But it's very exciting to have those long arms um, added to our Bernina collection. We have started our trade-in event early. So um, the, on new machines, you bring a trade in and on a new Bernina, we will um, give you a trade in allowance. So that's pretty exciting. We have, I think, most all the machines in stock. If not, we can get it pretty quickly for you. We're, we are all set to uh, set you up with a long arm if you're ready for it. We are definitely ready to do that for you. Um, highly competitive here at artistic artifacts and then so many more reasons why um, you want to buy from us so we have great techs on staff in-house we have wonderful customer service and um, lessons long arm lessons will be taking place in the store so we'll get you set up on yours and and then um, have you come and take your less time at, in store we want to keep you coming in and seeing what's going on and what the advancements are in those those long arms and those other machines and um, we just think that we have the best community ever and that's part of what you're doing when you're purchasing and when you're going to a store is that you become part of our community at Artistic Artifacts so please come talk to us in the store um, we uh, do discuss prices and the machines and the and what we you know come to meet the best option for you in the store we will not do it over the phone so please if you would we appreciate you acknowledging that so that is huge 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 the next thing is we're getting ready for our comments sold which will be September 8th 7th Thursday yeah that's the 7th 7th okay um, I was like, not the 8th. <laughs> not the 8th, because we got Seth here. That's right. So the 7th, that evening, um, we will have it. Now, comment solds for us, the way that we do them here at Artistic Artifacts, they take us about two to three weeks to put them together because we're trying to do things different and um, not pull exact things from the floor or the website. So we are putting together some special items and packages and that type of stuff so it does take us a little time and I know we were doing them every other week and it just became too much for us at the moment there's just so much going on uh, so that will be the seventh Seth after is here on the eighth he we do still have seats open for the um, lecture and uh, we did just send out a newsletter about um, the discounts and what we're doing those evenings. We will have a discount in the store. We will have um, for those ticket holders for the lecture after five, the store will be closed and it will only be for you. 
and uh, for anybody who's bought a ticket so you still can buy tickets please uh, know that uh, we have some seats left okay so da 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 um all right the other thing that we are um kathy lincoln many of you may know kathy lincoln from embroidery and mastery classes and she's worked at many stores in the northern virginia area she is retiring at the end of this year i think we will be able to s catch her or maybe get her in for something when she comes back but she is leaving she's retiring and leaving on a round the world trip so um that we're very happy for her and wish her lots of great uh enjoyment in her traveling but hope that she remembers that we're here <laughs> and, and she doesn't block our text <laughs> kathy help 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 so we have katherine nichols who's been working with um kathy um lincoln for the last uh three to four months so she'll be taking over the mastery classes in our b our bernina educator and and on our domestic machines and and surgers so we're working towards that uh we will change mastery classes will be in the <laughs> oops <laughs> as, as you can tell <laughs> kyle's not here today <laughs> So Caitlin and I are winging it, and the worst part was we couldn't get the phone in the holder, so oops, sorry about that. Anyway, I always have to have your sense of humor around here. So um, we will be doing some changes. We will uh, do some Zoom classes in-house, and, and all that stuff's coming. More details are coming. The other thing I want to let you know that is coming, and um, I think this is my last announcement, I'm not sure, is we are being forced to change our point of sale. So that is what um, happens when you come into our store. We will go forward with individual customer accounts. We will have a new setup um, in the store that will be tablets and things. Um, some of you may be aware of Shopify, that's who we're going with. So with that being forced um, and we decided that Shopify offers us a point of sale service, but it also offers us a web service. So in the next six to eight weeks, we are going through another transition. If you remember, we just did our website a year ago, but we're doing it again. Um, I think that this will be, um, I just keep telling myself it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be wonderful. It's great. The consultant we're working with is wonderful, but just know that some of your experiences online are gonna change and, and it's our hope that it changes for the better. But if you would be patient with us, that would be nice, but you don't have to worry about it for at least another six weeks, but it's coming. I want you to know it's coming. And if anybody has hung around me and technology, you know this is painful. I'm forced, I have no choice. So um, just hang in there with me. All right, anybody had any questions? Just lots of good mornings and Christine Citrula said two weeks till Seth after. So yes. we're all excited for him to come and everybody to be here. We are, we are, totally. Um, okay, I do have one more announcement. So is next Saturday, next weekend Labor Day weekend? See, I lose track. Sharon, is next Saturday when Kyle interviews me? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> so I'm like, I wake up and I go, what do I have to do today? Um, so we thought, you know, I've looked at some of the other social media and that kind of stuff, and there's, there's open questions. Um, that you ask maybe an artist, a, a pattern maker, a store owner or whatever. So I'm gonna give you an opportunity to submit some questions to Kyle and Kyle is going to interview me next Saturday. So for our Facebook Live. So if you can submit your questions ahead of time, go ahead and put them in this feed, you know, it. I, Please give me something to talk about, all right? Um, so, you know, just about the business, about my art, you know, yes, I have a family, I'm still married, <laughs> you know, just ask some questions. If you're interested, hopefully 
you will be. And um, I know I've already done Facebook Lives that talk to you and show you my quilts and, and some of it, but this is more of, um, you know, why did you start the store? Why do you do what you do? I don't know, I'm crazy. Um, you know, but I'll give you better answers than that. Okay, we good? If they are not on the feed right now, where could they submit questions later or awesome. until then? Thank you. Email them to sales at artisticartifacts.com. Awesome question. Thank you very much. All right. We're ready for col be colorant. We are ready. Ready. Okay. So this product um, is by Jacquard, and it's called Decolorant. So um, I know that in the past, when somebody wanted to remove color from in a pattern or from a fabric, most of it you used bleach. Bleach will definitely remove color, of course, probably from your favorite shirt or your pair of jeans, but it, and it always continues to eat away at your fabric. So then they told us about antichlor. So you're supposed to wash the garment in the antichlor or whatever you bleach with the antichlor, and that's supposed to stop the bleach. Well, also, you know, and then they came out with these great bleach pens that you could write with and that kind of stuff. That's all fine, but just know that your fabric is probably gonna still continue de to degrade. We may not be here to see it, so you might not care, but it will, um, I don't know that it actually ever stops. And you do, you really should use antichlor. You can get that from Pro Chemical and Dye. Um, I know the bleach pens are fun, that's all cool. But they came up with an alternative, which is not bleach. Um, I'm not sure what it is, because of course that's proprietary, but um, it, it is not going to continue to degrade the fabric. So you want to be careful about that. So it comes in a liquid, in a jar. Um, I found out the hard way that if you keep a jar for 10 years and don't use it, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so don't, you know, this stuff is not precious. Please take time to try it. Um, if you have a jar like me who had something from beforehand, try it and see if it works. I didn't get really good um, uh, what I considered pattern on it, and, and I'm sorry I threw it out. I was like, oh, man, dang. I think I'm going to go back out and get it out of the trash, but it's at home. So it just wasn't a very – you couldn't see it. It was, it was, not, it was not good. wasn't – wasn't what I wanted to see. It may be fine for something else. But anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is this stuff expires. So I have done some wood blocks. I have done some stencils. And I'm really liking the stencils because I think I can get a better coverage than I'm getting with the wood blocks. So um, and I'm using batiks and I'm using commercial fabric. So, and I purposely didn't put out any of my samples because I want you to see the process first and then we'll try to show you some, some of the samples and what's, what I think are successes and I'm really excited about. So I'm doing better with stencils. So these are some stencils. We do have a whole collection of stencils. I have sprayed this stencil um, in a box like this with, this happens to be 404, but I have been known to, you know, if you have a spray glue for your batting, I, I use whatever I can get my hands on. I do recommend that when you spray, you spray in some kind of box because if you don't, you get sticky on your iron, on your surface, on everything and it makes it a little bit tough. So I do have, and, and the reason why I'm going to spray it is because it's going to seal onto my fabric. Now this is Kona Brown. Haven't tried this one yet. I have a sponge, and I think 
I'm able to get a good amount of decolorant in the stencil. It's it's definitely wait when you see the samples that I did. So you do need to um, okay that thought's gone. You need to do something but I don't know what it is anymore. Um, you can see I'm rubbing it. I can see the difference in the fabric that it's actually wetting the fabric in there and because I have sprayed my stencil it's not moving. Someone asked if a brush would work. A brush would work, yes, absolutely. Work. You can use a brush for sure. So you can see that's gone through and it needs to dry. So we can take this off. And there it is. Now, because I'm impatient, the other option to the iron is using a heat gun. Heat, whatever. I don't know what the politically correct name for them are anymore. Um, heat tool. So this is going to make a lot of noise, so you're not going to hear me, but we'll just see if I can heat a section of it. And you never know what is under something. It doesn't always turn white. Ooh, cool! Wow. Ooh, I'm loving that. So, that is so cool. You definitely, totally do not know what's going to be under it. So, um, oh, neat wow. color. Neat color. Okay. That does not get any easier than that. Is that not cool? It's like magic. It's magic. That's so cool. <sighs> All right, so we'll let the rest of this dry. So then I found in my stash some little squares that I'm sure one of my friends did for me, gave me. They're all nicely cut, and I'm like, oh, they're nice, bright colors. They are all hand-dyed, I'm sure with Procyon MX. So this stencil, remember, you don't have to use the whole stencil. You can use part of it. I have already applied the decolorant, and you can't see it. It's dried, so let's see what this does. I did. Did I not? Oh, I didn't put it on that one. I put it on this one. Oops, 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 oops. That was a demo one. All right, so. That's so nice. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. So one of the things I had been told in Indonesia is like when you get black or navy, Fatigue, you never know what's underneath it. So it could be something, you know, it could be a different color. It could be yellow for all we know. It would. All right. So you always, what I want you to know about this one is that your stencil never has to fit your fabric. You can just always use a piece of it. And that doesn't matter. I mean, you, that, that applies when you use a gel plate, uh, mono printing, and, you know, paper. It doesn't matter if you can't see it. Um, all right. 
Someone asked what kind of face mat gives the best protection and does it need to be cleaned in between uses? Um, I would say yes. <laughs> Lost it again, sorry. Um, I'm using a crappy um, cutting mat that you know is all cut up and everything so we go through mats here at the store like crazy but of course we don't throw them out we cut them up and they become mixed media tools so I use that um, I do wash my my stencils I have washed my wood blocks um, but I, I definitely am having better results with the stencils and I think it's because I can get more of the um, decolorant on there okay so now this one is wet so I was concerned I was like okay maybe it's working. it's gonna mush but look Ooh. it still has some great lines and this little iron with these wool mats let me tell you these things are absolutely awesome the iron is very hot and that is one of the things that's important with the colorant. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Me and a customer were talking about these irons yesterday. They're just awesome. For yeah. the size and the price, you can't beat it. And I really love the mat. It's much sturdier than my iron is. So here are things that are from somebody hand dyeing with Procyon MX and look at how different they all are. This is really pretty cool. I'm gonna stitch these. Now, you can see they are a little stiff here. So I wash it with Synthrapol and it was gonna take the decolorant, excess decolorant out and it's going to soften the fabric up again. But I think I can keep going with the heat. All right, so, all right, I'm getting lost in the fabric. It's very cool. All right, now, how many of you guys want to use paper? So paper is definitely doable also. Which stencil are you using? Oh, is, um, it, is that the package for it? This is, could be the package for it. Uh, 959 Rainbow Branch Circle. So that one we probably still have. Um, by the time I get things done, the stencils are probably not available anymore. Um, here's a couple of stencils over here that um, I pulled. There are new stencils in the in, on our online. We also have a lot of stencils on sale, sale as well. Right. Okay, I am looking for my paper. My paper, my paper. So this is our paper. So we have this Indian paper that started out as fabric. And we've cut them down into manageable blocks of, of papers. And one of the things that you always have to do is what is on the back side. So sometimes I like the back side better than I like the front side. And um, you can see this one came out white. And I just, adding more heat to it does not bother it. Um, the instructions do say to rinse the papers off in water and then let them dry. So we can do that. All right, now let's try gonna try this this brown is really really awesome color okay so I know that I have done well with this bird and the reason why I've done well is if you look at those carvings it's got big pieces so you can see this one worked now, I have had trouble with blocks like this one. I didn't get enough decolorant on it and it didn't do too well. 
and the mermaid even I didn't do too well with it so I have to keep working see it's even gone can't even see it this was the octopus or not, the jellyfish not, and you can see I, I definitely you can't the print is not good so I'm not quite sure what my problem is. I'm using my foam mat, which regardless of what you're doing, you have to have a foam mat. Um, here's the mermaid. Let's see if I can do better with the mermaid. Someone asked if the wool mat that you're using under here mm -hmm. can be washed. They said they would be worried about their decolorant transferring to other fabrics. Oh. Um, it's okay, I got it. Okay. Sharon's got gotcha. you. Yeah, see, it's not, the block is not holding. I've done pretty well with the block before. All right, let's try a rubber stamp, too. I just think I'm not putting enough decolorant on the wood block. You don't have your mat under it too. I do have my mat. So yeah. Well? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know, I know. That's the right answer. See that's so you can see that they're wet there. So just can't I don't understand why the mermaid's not working well she's a little better she's working better better than what I got before but you can see so here's where it's spun so maybe a brush would be better maybe um, a brush would give you more even here but that's definitely because I think the wood blocks are really cool prints, but um, it definitely has a difference in um, how much goo is getting on there. Boy, I love this color. Jen said she likes the way that the mermaid looks. Yeah. And so does Chris. All right. Thanks, yeah, guys. I like her. She has character. She does. All right. So, I'm just sorry. I'm loving this brown. Wow. Yeah, I that pink, is, the pink, pink and brown combo is great. Awesome. And I did it because I could have print picked black Kona. But I thought, no, no, let's try a different color. And call that a happy accident. Happy accident for sure. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Stitch. Need some stitches. All right. So that is cool. Um, let's see. I think Suzanne said, hmm, okay to iron on the foam mat. Uh, looks like. <laughs> <laughs> we maybe wouldn't recommend it. Do as we say, not as we do. Don't start any fires. Make sure you're not going to give yourself any kind of, um, you know, this is, does have a smell. Um, this one is very cool. Look at this. This is a batik. Oh, that is fun. Oh, I love this. Oh, my gosh. Who would have thought it was purple? And that's a wood block. So, Catherine Edder said the woodblock and stamps give it a more ethereal look mm -hmm. would be awesome on t-shirts and wearables. There. And I agree. There you go. But isn't that cool? Oh my god. I love that it came out purple. Definitely not a bleach. Nope. This is awesome. No. Nope. So, um, but it does have a smell to it. So, yes, it is better to not be in a little corner where you have no air. Um... Just make it's sure. not horrendous though. It's no, I mean I'm not overpowering. Good. Yeah, it's not bothering you. No. Okay, so. Oh God, much better. Definitely less bleach. irritating than bleach. 
So, um, but this one, wow. And this is just a stash fabric. I'm sorry, we don't have this in the store. That is just a stash. Um, the other thing I tried, cause I got really cocky with the stencils. So yes, I did. I did get very cocky. So we have new silks packages in from India. This one is on the website. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll play with a color that you guys can buy. All right, so some of that glue is coming off. So here's the package. It's all these nice brights. They're all saris that are silk saris that have been dyed to our request. Now, all right, yeah, we definitely have some glue on there. Let's see from here. That's a problem with the stencil, but oh well. Iron it from the other side and see what happens. I wanted to yeah. see because. It's hard to see it picking up. Can you? Yep. Oh, look at that. Now it's silk, so you don't really want your iron sitting. I've been known to burn holes in things. I know that doesn't surprise any of you. So see, I really like the stencils. Wow, that's very cool. A lot of people watching are just as excited. Somebody Good. said you are taking us down a dangerous creative path. That would be my responsibility. That's my job. And Jen said, "Oh, Judy, I do not have time for all of these things." <laughs> We'll have to make some time because this is awesome. Yeah. And I, I think I can just, so if I want it to be like this and I don't want to keep ironing it, I wash it. If I don't like how I applied the decolorant to the fabric, I wash it and it comes out and I can start over. That was one of the things I didn't tell you. So this is very cool now let's see unlike bleach where unlike once it's once even it's there. semi close to it it's done so this is the side i actually applied the decolorant to and we ironed it from the back Yeah, I'm liking those stencils. Yeah, Jane said she's loving the grunge look that we have happening. Yes, yes. Totally transformed the sorry silk into something else. Very cool, very cool. That's, it's all... It's like making your own fabric. Yes, yes! Um, then this is some of the um, hand-dyed uh, cottons that we have. So I'm going to try a better better one because I was using it for the block printing. So that's some new products. So, and then the other thing, let's see, where did I have that? Um, we have um, clothing that use decolorant or some type of discharge. So we have some vests and this is what they've done is they've taken the whole um, yardage and it's been dyed indigo. Then they put a stencil or silk screen on it and silk screen a decolorant. So these are our Indian hand dyed vests that we have and these are on the website so you can purchase them. We have lots of other clothing but we recommend that you try them on because we haven't gotten them quite standardized yet. Um, a few people are a little bit confused saying since you mentioned that you could wash it and it would come out They're now thinking if they make something with decolorant it uh, can never be washed So can you explain how that process works again if they yes. missed it at the beginning? Yes, no, no, I, that's that's good. I, I understand that I could make it so If I have not ironed it once I iron decolorant it's in so you're pretty much heat setting it so to speak 
But say you have a stencil or something that went way bad and you don't want to have it, um, you don't want the print to show up. You can wash it, it rinse out the decolorant, start over. But once you have set it with an iron, it is washable. Sorry, I understand how that was. Yeah, um, we don't want to deter confused. anyone. Yes. You definitely can make wearables with this. Yes, absolutely. We, we have clothing done with it ourselves, so definitely would be awesome. Even Did on like a pillow or yes. a shirt or something. Absolutely. So, um, and Jacquard has a, has a demonstration on their YouTube channel that shows actually silkscreen with it too, and they are all doing it on clothing. So, um, natural dyed yeah. fabric. Oh, yes, natural fabrics. Um, and then this is, you know, as we did say, we got a bunch of new um, clothing in. We asked for the scraps. So we have these indigo scrap packs, and they could be strips. They could be anything. They're small packages, but they're all hand-dyed indigo. They have not been washed, so the blue is going to come off. But I'm going to take these pieces and actually wash them when I get home so that the decolorant is on there. And you would wash that with Synthrapol the first time? Synthrapol the first time, yes. But then it's okay for... Regular, but you never want to use a chlorine, uh, yeah. anything with chlorine. Um, here, this one was, because I've worked with things that were all kind of natural dyed, this is a printed piece of fabric. So this worked with the wood block quite nicely. And that would be, would that be a cotton blend fabric? No, this is 100% cotton. This is 100% cotton. Catherine was wondering what it would look like on a cotton blend, but most of our fabrics Most we of have ours are all cotton. So cotton. I would assume a cotton blend is gonna do the same thing as with dye. It's gonna take to some threads and it's not gonna take to other threads. So try it, Catherine, you might get a really funky look. Um, let's see. This is more of the purple, which I just thought was absolutely cool. See, I didn't iron that as much, and you can see the more you iron it, the more that's going to come through. Oh, wow. Um, and there's our bird that came out yellow. And then this was a black batik that I had. This was done a while ago um, where I stamped it with a wood block looks pretty successful to me so I don't know what my problem is today and um, this has all this has been washed afterwards so um, all right I don't think I have anything else to show you are there any other questions the color is in stock it's ready to go um, the new Indian silks are in the batik, the blue, and we also have indigo in yardage, solid blue yardage, if you're interested. And of course, the Kona brown is in. Um, and again, I think when you get the next bolt, it could be something totally different. So you're just never sure. It's always an experiment. It's always something fun. Someone was mentioning how that would be really fun to stitch over, and that's that's what Judy said she plans to do with a few of these. So definitely think of all the possibilities. Many, many possibilities. All right, I got to get to the store. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And again, if you have any questions that you would like answered next week, um, I email us at sales at artisticartifacts.com. And otherwise, stay in tune with our newsletters. They're coming out. Lots and lots of things happening. We hope that you can join us. Thanks. Bye.